Now that we have learned about what is static testing and how testing can actually help find defects earlier in the life cycle by conducting reviews, it is very important for us to understand more about a review process. It's really critical for an employee or a reviewer to know about the formal review process, that how exactly it is conducted, what are the success factors which helps a contributor to make it more effective in terms of conducting static testing. So yes, when it comes to a reviewer and the management, both are equally responsible for making a review process more successful when conducted. Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and today we are talking about a review process. When we generally talk about reviews, it is just uh, any other kind of event which actually happens in terms of minimizing defect or finding defects earlier in the life cycle. Now when we do that, it's really important for us to understand how a review process can actually be conducted within an organization in order to help minimize the defects at an early phase. Now when you do a review process, it's really important for any contributor, be it developer, tester, any other documentation team, stakeholder. So no matter who you are, but if you do not have an effective contribution by conducting static analysis or static testing as well, you may not be able to find defects and in turn, it will be completely a waste of time. So to see the benefits of a review being conducted in your process, you need to know what is the process of review. A general process of review includes planning, initiating a review, individual preparation, issue communication and analysis, and fixing and reporting. So these are the five major stages of a formal review process. We do have different types of review, but I'll come to it a little later. Now, when you talk about a full-fledged formal review process, it includes these five stages, where it generally begins with the planning phase, where the most important role is manager. Now, of course, we do have some standard roles and responsibility, where we have some standard roles, which we call it as manager, author, moderator, scribe, reviewers, and of course, to a certain extent, we also have someone called as review leader who contributes to moderator in turn. So when it comes to roles and responsibility, we will be understanding them with the process flow itself and which will add more value to you. So when it comes to a formal review process, the very first stage is planning, where planning is a responsibility of manager or management, where this manager can be anyone in the organization subjected what type of document you are actually following. For example, if you are uh, reviewing the requirements, then your project manager will be the manager here. If you're talking about a development specific document, the development manager becomes the manager here. So just being within the department, the person who is leading the department will play the role of manager. Now, what are the activities which happen as a part of planning of review? It is to define the schedule, define the roles and responsibility further in the review process that who will be moderator, who all will be reviewing it, how long this review will happen and when do we want to have the outputs, or how much time we will be giving for the preparation for the reviewers and many more such things. Also, when it comes to formal review process, it is really critical to define entry and exit criteria for such reviews. Entry and exit criteria are actually a formal way of determining when to start a process and when to call off a process. So we already know about entry and exit criteria from our previous tutorials. When it comes to further, we can also make use of certain matrices which might be very helpful for us to determine the effectiveness of review process, which is very important in order to define whether this step was beneficial and added any value to the business or not. Once the planning is done, we kick off with the review process, which is alternatively also known as initiate review, which is completely a responsibility of the moderator who will be determined by the manager, where moderator is a person of the organization who knows how to run the review process. 
He is one man army who knows everything about the review, coordinating between the review process and the reviewers, distributing the document, answering any questions about the review process, why it has been conducted, what part of the document is under review, and all sort of questions will be answered by moderator during kickoff. So putting it together in kickoff, the moderator will distribute the document either physically like printed copies of it or electronically through email or shared rights and then explain the objective to the reviewers whoever is selected as reviewer for this document that what exactly is the objective of the review the second thing after initiate review once you initiate this and distribute the document the next phase is individual preparation when we say individual preparation that means no matter who the reviewer is, they all will have their independent preparation or review of the document. Now, when it comes to individual review, it's all about that everyone should put their own independent perception towards the document and think what you think is not up to the mark. Generally, the basic objective of conducting a review on documentation on any work product is to find any kind of inconsistency, omission or, or irrelevancy, incomplete requirement, unclear statements or any such thing. So basically these will create a lot of understanding on the work product. Other way around, it would also help you to find such simple mistakes much earlier in the life cycle so that they don't turn or produce into the later cycles as defect. So yes, these review process will be very helpful for you to eliminate them at a very early phase in the life cycle. Once individual preparation is done, that is independent preparation by each of the reviewer is done. So certainly there will be some timeline between that process, like few days will be provided to them. And then uh, you will call for the next stage, which is called as issue communication and analysis, which is also known as review meeting. Now, during the review meeting, everyone will gather together under one roof. Now, the most important part of the review meeting is to communicate the issues which you think you have found. Now, each reviewer will start presenting their list of findings. Now, list of findings is basically the defect list in terms of like a misunderstanding, unclear requirements or anything like that, whatever. So, when it comes to that particular meeting, we will have everyone there. The major role called as manager, moderator, author. Author is again the person who has written that document which is under review. Then we have reviewers who all have reviewed the document. Everyone will be at one place. And additionally, one role called as scribe. Scribe could be anyone, anyone in the organization who can actually document all your steps and everything what is being discussed. So just to prepare the minutes of meeting within the organization or within the review process. So the scribe responsibility will be completely to write it, whatever people are reporting and what is that author has responded to that and whether author will fix it right away or he will get back to you. So throughout the review process, that is review meeting process, Every reviewer will present one after the other. During this, author will be addressing their queries and answering them. In case author cannot respond to all the queries, the defect will be logged and remains open to be resolved later. Also, other reviewers are welcomed to support with any kind of suggestion, any kind of inputs to make that defect resolved during the review meeting itself. Don't forget team, we are always trying to minimize the efforts as early as possible. So at the end, when it comes to uh, the last stage, once the review meeting is over, things will work on, author will rework on the document, provide necessary details, and then comes the fixing and reporting part. Where fixing is obviously author will resolve it and conduct a formal follow-up process with the reviewer, asking them if that actually resolves their issue or not. If you think there's something more, author will rework and continue to do that till your query is resolved. And then, of course, a review report is being generated and submitted for analysis in terms of identifying if this review was very helpful. Remember that exit criteria which we created will also be evaluated during this last stage to call off the review phase. Once done, we will also look forward to evaluate certain matrices to check the effectiveness of the review process. 
Now, there is also this learning for improvements. So based on these matrices, based on the review reports and outcomes of the review, you can decide on further improvements on your review process. This is not all, of course, there's a lot to explore about this. We do have types of review. We do have different uh, approaches to be used in review. And I'll be getting back to you with another episode for that. So that's all from this particular episode, team. Should you have anything else below, beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'm there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video, team, and happy learning.